The ammeter in figure 23.24, that one, reads 3 amps, check, I1, I2, and epsilon. Find I1, I2, and epsilon. Where epsilon is an electromotive force, it is a voltage. So, don't know what to do here, so I'm just going to try to solve the circuit. Um, ideally, I try to reduce everything to just one battery and one circuit and one resistor. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that with this one because we have two batteries and they're not in series. So my next default assumption is I'm going to use Kirchhoff's uh, voltage loops. So there's Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. So we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is basically says that whenever you go in a circle, that's supposed to be a circle, the change in voltage is going to equal zero. And we can start wherever we want. I'm going to start right here. And so when we go across the battery, we're going to have nine volts. These are all going to be measured in volts. So I'm just going to write nine. So we go across the battery, nine volts. Um, we go across the resistor, and since we're going in the direction of current, we're going to have a voltage drop. So we're going to subtract it, minus I1 times three, because v equal, this is just Ohm's law, V equals IR, and so I'm going to write the voltage drop in terms of current and resistance. Then, um, yes, I'm going to call this I1, I2, and this I3. And then in the middle, we're going to have minus I3 times 2. And then the ammeter it's not going to, it's going to have very low voltage drops, so we assume that's zero, and it gets back to the beginning, and so we know that's going to equal zero. All right, so that's this loop right here. Now we're going to do another loop. Uh, we basically have two choices. We can do a loop like this, or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a small loop like this. Um, I try and do loops in the direction of current, it doesn't really matter, but it means that you're going to have fewer negative numbers. And I just tend to be a positive person in general, so that's why I try to make draw my loop in the direction of the actual current. But if you're wrong, it doesn't matter, not a big deal. Um, so start here, jump across the battery, gives us epsilon, minus I2 times 4.5, minus... I3 times 2, and that's going to equal 0. All right, so now we have two equations and three unknowns. So we want a third equation. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to use Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law basically says that all the currents going into a node have to go out of the node. Think of it as water in a pipe. All water that goes in a pipe has to also go out of pipe because we're assuming water is an incompressible fluid and it's not spraying out the pipes, but even if it was, you'd still have to count that. Long story short, I3 goes down this way, I2 goes out that way, I1 goes out that way. We could also use the top note up here, doesn't matter. We're gonna say that I3 has to equal I1 plus I2. Fair enough. All right, so then when we, to do this over here, we're going to say that um, I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals 0. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in form, terms of a matrix. And so I'm going to do the first column is going to be I1, second column is going to be I2, third column is going to be I3. So Rearranging this, this is going to be 3i1 plus 0i2 plus 2i3 equals 9. Second uh, equation is going to be 0i1 plus 4.5. I2 plus 2 I3 equals epsilon. 
And then we're going to have I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals 0. So now we have three equations, three unknowns, and I like the way they're set up. And so at this point, I'm actually going to put it in a matrix. So it's going to be 3, 0, 2, 9. So this is going to be an extended matrix, augmented matrix, 0. So you basically pretend there's a little equal sign right there. Uh, 0, 4.5, 2, epsilon, um, 1, 1, negative 1, 0. Let's see here. Um, we are told what I3 equals. Uh, we might have to do this through substitution because they gave us um, I3 as a value here instead of the voltage. So maybe I will have to do some. Yes, we're going to have to. So I'm going to use this equation up here. So changing tactics slightly, I'm going to say that since they didn't give us what epsilon is, um, I think we could still probably solve this doing, we we'll basically put it into row reduced echelon form and then it makes it easy. We're not going to do that this time because I think it'd actually be more cumbersome and since they gave us current. But if they gave you the battery, if this is a given, epsilon was a given, and I3 was not a was not a given, then it'd be easier to do it this method. So, but we're not going this time. So this time we're going to solve for I1. I1, oh, I1 equals 9 minus 2I3 over 3. We know that I3 is 3 amps. So it's going to be equal to 9 minus 6, 2 times 3 is 6, over 3, 9 minus th 6 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I1 is 1 amp. Now we can go down to this third part, third equation. I2 equals I3 minus I1. I3 is 3 amps, we know that. I1 is 1 amp, we just found that. So I2 is 2 amps. So now we have all the data we need to solve this middle equation. So we're going to do 4.5 times I2, which is 2, plus 2 times I3, which is 3. And this gives us 4.5 times 2, which is 9, plus 2 times 3, which is 6. 9 plus 6 is 15. This is going to be a measure of voltage, so it's 15 volts. That's pretty much it. Is that what we wanted? Do we want to find epsilon? Oh, we want to find I1 and I2 as well, which we did just along the lines. So 1 amp, 2 amps, and 15 volts. So the way we did this, this one wasn't too bad. Um, was we had this circuit. First thing you want to do is you want to reduce it down to a simple circuit, just a battery and a resistor. Um, that looks like we're not going to be able to do it because we have two different batteries and different branches. It's going to be cumbersome. I don't think it's going to work. So we're like, all right, first easy path, fail. Backup plan, plan B, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's voltage law is you go in a loop, and in that loop, you're going to have voltage drops, and the voltage in any given loop, the difference in voltage there is going to be zero. And we're going to use that to create an equation. Uh, we did that with two, uh, two loops. We probably could have done a third loop. I didn't want to because I wanted to use Kirchhoff's current law. And Kirchhoff's current law basically says that any current going into a node also has to leave the node. The analogy I use is a hydraulic analogy, basically water going in or out of a pipe. Same idea. Water goes in, it's going to force some water out. So I use this node down here. We could have also used this node up here. It would have just given us the exact same thing. 
maybe opposite, but it would have uh, you could have done algebra to make it the same. And we got I3, basically the current in the middle, is going to equal I1 plus I2, which is the two currents on the left and right side. Use that, did some math. I set everything up to do um, some linear algebra, some matrix theory, some row reduced echelon form, um, which I like to do if you're given all the voltages, but none of the currents. But since we're given one of the currents, it's actually easier to do it through substitution and algebra, which we did and we solved uh, the equations through substitution, brute force, manliness, and math. And we got one amp, two amps, and 13 volts. So not too bad. Hope that helped. See you in the next one.